G'day folks, Connor here from CW's Tech Reviews back with another video. And today we're doing a comparison video between the Fuji X-E4 and the Canon M50. Right now I'm at 25 frames per second on both of them. 1 over 50 of shutter speed, f2.8. And ISO 200 on the Canon and ISO 500 on the Fuji. And the problem is with the Fuji immediately, I'm telling you right now, I can't see the screen on the Fuji. It flips up and I can see like a couple of centimeters of it, but I can't see my frame. I can't see if I'm in focus. I can't even see if it's still recording. Bit of a bummer, but that's what they've offered here at this price point. Now, as I speak, Canon M50 is going for around 750 Aussie dollars, maybe 800, maybe a little bit cheaper on sale. And the XE4 is going for about 1350 with this kit lens here, which is the Fujinon f2.8 kit lens. And on the Canon, I have the Canon f2.8 prime lens, so they're very similar, very, very similar. And I don't know if you like what you're seeing in terms of footage. So what I've done is I've exposed for the outside and then lit up my face with a video light over here. So that's how I've got the exposure. But I definitely have to crank up the Fuji ISO a little bit higher, which is standard, we all know that. But what do you think? Now let's just try the autofocus. I'm gonna go from here, in, out. Looks like Canon might have. Well, there we go, there's the box, and I can't see what's happening on the Fuji. So I could be way out of focus on the Fuji. Wouldn't know for image quality, it's tough. I like, I like what Fuji has to offer in image quality, I really do. And Canon, it just always has good image quality and always has great colors and usually has amazing autofocus and it seems to be doing okay here. One thing I noticed with Canon is the lower down you go, the worse the autofocus is with glasses. I've got the specs here for both of them. 26 megapic megapixel, 26 megapixel sensor on the Fuji, 24 on the Canon. ISO to 12,800 on the Fuji and 25,000 on the Canon, which can expand to 51,000, but it's horrendous, you wouldn't go that high. M mount, X mount, flippy screen, tilty screen. Electronic viewfinder in both of these, and I always seem to like the Fuji ones a bit better, I don't even know why. You can't really put a finger on it, why? 10 frames per second shooting on the Canon, 20 on the Fuji. So. Bit of a difference there, and if photos is your game, then you might lean towards the Fuji here. We have 4K filming on both, but I definitely lose this autofocus on the Canon, and I get a big crop, and the autofocus becomes contrast autofocus, which is pretty great. 4K, you can see the crop on the Canon, it's definitely there straight away. 4K on the Fuji, I can't see the flippy screen. Seems like I'm in focus. Looks like the Fuji's focus is better. And Fuji has 425 autofocus points and Canon has 143. Unless you're in contrast mode, then it doesn't really matter. But this is contrast mode autofocus on the Canon. 
Something else I forgot to mention is, so I'm currently filming the audio through the Canon because the Canon has the mic jack. And the Fuji does as well, but it's the smaller one and it comes with an adapter, so straight away that's a pain in the ass. And I wish Fuji would stop doing that. I just want them to fix that. We shouldn't have to have dongles and adapters and stuff just for cameras. Just put a mic jack in. Just fix it already. Every camera, fix it. Settle down, Connor. Settle down. So you can see the Canon autofocus is struggling there. Canon autofocus. Struggling. Fuji autofocus, 4K. Now I can't see if it's struggling. Right, so I'm gonna do some video. I'm gonna do 1080p, 60 frames per second. Try out the 120p as well. Also going to uh, do street photography, maybe a bit of landscape and a couple of portraits. focus but right. let's hit the road so we're outdoors now we're going to do some 1080p 50 frames per second slow motion and then some 100 frames per second slow motion and some b-roll around the country let's do some b-roll I should also mention we have 1080p 50 frames per second now that's what we're filming on and it's also f16 because it's so bright and sunny i don't have nd filters for both of them and 320 iso 200 iso on the canon both recording okay for handling the canon m50 is definitely better there's more dials and everything is more accessible to use on a day-to-day -day sort of shooting basis Whereas the XE4, although it's small and robust, is a little bit sort of bland in its look, but also in the way you hold it, its design, and it's not really molded to your hand, unlike the Canon M50. So I definitely like the Canon M50 just for holding and run and gun sort of shooting. It's definitely better in my opinion. The menu on the Canon M50 is just way easier to access and way easier to navigate. Whereas on the XE4, it is quite fiddly, I was getting frustrated at times trying to use it, uh, whereas the M50, it's just really straightforward and simple. So you're going to want to consider that when you're out and about shooting. But like I always say, if you just buy a Fuji and you've never used a Canon, you will never know any different. But if you have used both, you're definitely going to notice that the Canon M50 is better to shoot on. And I also think it's worth pointing out, on a photo to photo basis, shooting on the M50 and XE4 is quite similar. And I actually think it's gonna come down to personal preference. So I think for portrait photos and landscapes and street photography, I really do think that they're just as good as each other. I don't really think one is much better, but I definitely think that you will have a preference for which one is better. So I have my preference, but I'm not gonna tell you which one it is. That's going to be up to you to decide by looking at these videos and they're always going to look different 
on the screen now that you're watching on YouTube and as opposed to when you get them home on your computer. And then you will be able to edit the video clips and the photos to suit you as you want to. So straight out of camera, I think it's hard to split. I really do and make your own mind up what you think about these videos and these photos. Except I think the XC4's 4K is better than the M50's obviously. But I still prefer the Canon. And it's a lot cheaper. And I don't think Fuji's going to be really happy with me saying this, but it's the truth. Now, if I was comparing some higher-end Fuji and Canon cameras, I might swing easily over to the Fuji side. But at this low price point for the Canon, no, it's just way better. I've got to change the battery on the Canon, and then I'll be back to talk about battery life. All right, now we're talking about battery life and it's hard to split hairs. Now, I have noticed online that some sites say that the Fuji is better and it's about 100 photos more per battery. And I've owned the M50 for a while and I always have two batteries with me and it's just not quite enough. I should have three. So you do need to consider that. I think both of these you will need to buy extra batteries. Now, since I started filming at home yesterday morning, that's when I first started filming these comparisons, I definitely noticed that the XE4 drained quicker. And today I've had it plugged into a power pack as I've been filming, which you can't do on the Canon M50. So that's something you definitely want to consider as well. Canon M50, you just got the batteries and that's it. Unless you've got a proper portable charger that you can plug like a household connector to. But the XE4, you can just plug in a portable battery. And that's amazing. So I've got a 10,000 milliamp hour battery from Belkin that I just plug straight into the Fuji and it works a treat. Whereas with Canon, I've just got what I've got. But the Canon seemed longer. Like battery for battery recording video, Canon definitely seemed to last longer. This is a really pretty spot. Getting a bit low lighty. A bit low lighty. 1080p, 25 frames per second. Isn't it amazing? You get the, the right lighting conditions, you get really good footage. I mean, look at that. Sun setting by the river. You can hear the birds, you can hear the water flowing. This one here is a three-year-old camera, $800 camera. This one here is a three-month-old camera, $1,400 camera. My money is over here, for value anyway. Now, there's definitely more Fuji lenses available than the M series for Canon, but the Canon, you get an adapter and you've got access to like 400 lenses. With Fuji, you still got about 70. Uh, man, just loving that sunset. Let's see if I'll boost the ISO a bit more. That's at 640 ISO on the Canon. And 1600 ISO on the Fuji to get a similar image. Magical butt. Don't really feel like going home right now. This is too nice. Amazing. All right, gonna push the ISO a bit more on the Canon. We're going to 1250. ISO 1250. Now the Canon is now matching the Fuji for ISO. What do you think? Still looks pretty good. 
Again, I can't see the Fuji because it's got that flippy screen. <laughs> A little bit of flippy screen. Oh dear. So this is what I've got to do to see the flippy screen on the Fuji. I'm scaring the ducks. All right, we're both on the same ISO, both f2.8, both 25 frames per second. Ah, it's beautiful. And just for shits and giggles, here we are at 12,800 ISO on both of them, which might even be a little bit too high. So I'm just going to go up to f4. You can see the digital grain. So that's 12,500 ISO. Which one do you think looks better? I can see the digital noise in the Canon majorly, but it's still a pretty good shot. Like I can't see that clearly myself. It's pretty special. And the Fuji, I can't really tell. Digital noise. You wouldn't use it for professional shoot, but you would use it for your home videos. I think it's pretty cool. Like if you're filming something to show your family, you can. You can use 12,800 ISO. Pretty awesome. So 1080p, 1 over 50, 25 frames per second. F4, I say 12,800. Goodbye.